If this is the first time you're watching this, uh, I am Lisbeth, the founder of Nordic Dog Trainer. Um, I am in Norway. We, well, our head office, which is basically <laughs> here, my house, uh, is in Norway. We do have a venue, but I work from home most, uh, mostly. The venue is just outside Oslo. It's quite big. It has a nice indoor training facilities and a couple of offices and classrooms and stuff. And we do in-person seminars there in the summer. So we've had students coming literally from all over the world at the last uh, couple of summers to join our in-person seminars, which is absolutely wonderful. It's great. Um, so I am in Norway and Nordic Dog Trainer is based in Norway, which is in Scandinavia. Um, but we do mainly online courses, so we will worldwide. And then if you are joining any of our courses or not any, but if you join the dog trainer school, then you have an optional, not mandatory, uh, in-person five-day uh, course in Norway during the summer. I uh, talked to Tudi. Tudi Drugos is the author of On Talking Terms with Dogs. Mm, a lot of you who are here, you, you know that. And you've seen her, you met her maybe even. Uh, and you've seen her lectures inside the care um, uh, membership or uh, the level one, two, three or four at the dog trainer school. But for those of you who are new, I think there are quite some new people here. I just want to explain uh, a little bit, tell a little bit about where we're coming from and who you learn from, because at least to me, that's important to know. <clears throat> so Turi Drugos is... Uh, I've started to call her the queen of calming signals, just you know, to explain. Um, because in the 90s, she was studying. She did a study. Uh, she and a colleague of her did a study of the dog's uh, body language uh, and then wrote a book called the, On Talking Terms with Dogs. And now, 30 years later, most of you have most probably heard about the term calming signals. And that term is originating from her book. So Tudid is actually the, uh, this, the, how would I say, the um, uh, person who knows the most about it, the way she explains it. There's a lot of books, not a lot actually, I take it back. There are quite a few books about dogs language. Um, and Tudit's book on talking terms with dogs is also one of the most used reference books for new books the past 30 years. I don't know if they're new anymore, but not everyone are fortunate to learn the calming signals from where it originated, <laughs> Tudit. And lucky me, Tudit is Norwegian. So I first, I read her book in 2001. And then I met Tudit the first time in 2003. And then uh, I went to her dog trainer school. She used to have a dog trainer school herself. Uh, so I went at her dog trainer school in 2010. 11, something like that. I was actually going to go there in 2006. So I signed up, but then I got a stroke. So I postponed it a couple of years. So ever since then, uh, I don't know uh, why, but I'm very, very happy that it happened. Uh, that Tudid and I became, uh, it started actually by Tudid asking me to do a couple of lectures at her dog trainer school in Norway about how to teach because I'm a teacher and I used to teach at the university here in Norway and then we became a quen you know I would say not immediately but we you know got to know each other um, I started my company she wanted to do webinars for me first we did everything in Norway the first couple of years 
and we were collaborating really well together. Uh, and now, years later, I am very uh, happy uh, to say that Tudid is a, a, a friend, a very caring friend of mine, and a very good colleague. So if you want to learn about the calming signals, you need to read her book, okay? And then you read every other book, uh, every book you want to read. But the calming signals, the way we're talking about and describing it, uh, is from her. And Tudid is doing monthly webinars or monthly lectures inside our care community which is a membership platform open to everyone, uh, dog owners, dog caretakers. It has nothing to do with working with dogs. So this is open to everyone. So you can still meet her uh, live in her webinars inside the membership. Now, Tudid is 85 years old. She's not planning on retiring, which is great. But naturally, you know, she's not doing as much as she did before. Um, so she's not traveling anymore. So the only chance you have to, you see her is online and then mostly through Nordic, mm -hmm. which I made sure would happen, <laughs> but she is of course doing other, uh, events as well online. So if you're lucky, maybe you've seen her at other, uh, dog schools events as well, which is great. And also if you're new to us. You click on videos, there are quite a few with Tudid. So you can, we have a lot of free stuff for you. Also on our webpage, you can um, click on free resources and you can sign up and get Tudid's free lectures about calming signals. So we are giving you a lot of things for free because we want to spread this really, really important knowledge. Which brings me to today's topic, which is the calming signals of dogs. And we talk a lot about this. Uh, Tudid has a course as well, um, uh, Calming Signals Specialist. It's an online course open to only uh, people who have completed uh, a certain level of dog trainer school or other dog trainer schools. Um, but we we've been discuss we are discussing all the time <laughs> speak to Tudid almost daily on the phone so i wanted to clarify today i want to clarify even more what the calming signals really are because one of the most common questions that we get Tudid and i when we go live is what is my dog feeling when my dog is doing this and this behavior what is my dog feeling? What is my dog thinking? Okay. Um, and also we see that there are some misunderstandings about the calming signals. That the calming, when the dog is showing calming signals, it's showing it because he feels quite uncomfortable, afraid, uh, anxious, um something like that yeah but that's not necessarily true because it's also a polite way of talking to each other in the dog language so it's we can we can never really tell you what your dog is feeling or thinking you can't do it either but you are the expert on your dog Remember that you are always the expert on your dog. Even if you haven't heard about calming signals or if you don't know them yet, you still have the closest relationship to your dog closer than anyone else. So um, where was I going with this? <laughs> so you know more than we do what your dog is feeling or thinking. Okay. So you should, so my uh, advice is to stop asking other people what they think your dog is feeling. And then you learn yourself, you start studying your dog's calming signals and your dog's body language 
so that you become an expert in reading not only your dog, but other dogs too. Because that's when it gets really interesting and uh, uh, very useful. Because when you meet dogs, when you're out walking them, your dog, or if you're in a dog park or wherever, then you are more prepared of situations uh, and you can help your dog in situations if your dog is feeling nervous or uh, anxious or afraid. Yeah. So I prepared um, a PowerPoint to go through some things. Unfortunately, there's only text, no pictures. So let me share my PowerPoint and um go through a couple of important things so i called this what is your dog really feeling because i need to find good headlines to trigger your curiosity so that you're actually showing up okay that's why what i'm trying to do so when and why do dogs use calming signals first of all it's it's an instinct in, uh, it's their instinct. It's they're born with the calming signals. This is a question we get quite a lot. How did they learn it? Well, they're born with it. You know, one of the first calming signals they show is yawning. When the puppies are really, really young and we pick them up and they're yawning, in that situation, it's a calming signal. And all dogs, they have it in them because it's their natural body language so that's the beauty of being an animal they don't make things so very difficult for themselves like humans are because <laughs> we have different languages verbal languages so we have to learn each other's languages you know french spanish norwegian all of this but we also have a very very strong body language don't we and that's also instinct in us we don't learn this when you cross your hands like this it's not something your parents tell you to that if you feel a bit closed you close your hands you know if you feel nervous you you know you move your legs in in, in a special way and so on this these are things that we have in us same thing with dogs and the, the great thing is that a dog from china and a dog from norway they can understand each other. They don't have to go to a, a language course to understand each other. They have the same language. And all breeds have this language. There is no such thing as this breed. This I've heard this many times that someone has have been told that their breed typically don't show calming signals. No, it's not true. All breeds have the calming signals in them all dogs and all ages okay so where 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 it's might be a bit different is how they learn because they 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 use their calming signals but uh when they grow up when they're uh, older puppies and adolescent dogs it's how they use it and for example if we do tricks with them and we one of the calming signals is a trick then they might be a bit confused about when to use it yeah uh, also if we ignore them if we ignore them they need to to speak with a louder voice so if you don't hear them whispering or talking soft and nicely to you they have to raise their voice just like we do. So if we ignore the calming signals, they might start using more distance increasing signals, talking with a louder voice figuratively. Yeah. So when you know the calming signals, when you learn to understand how your dog is trying desperately all the time to communicate with us because they do they communicate all the time if your dog realizes that you know my my caretaker doesn't understand me whatsoever uh you know so they might 
stop using them or like I said, use uh, a, a more loud language. A very typical example of that is if we punish a dog for growling, if you don't allow a dog to growl and say, that's bad boy, don't growl, you're not allowed to growl. I met a lot of people saying, I don't accept that my dog is growling. Well, that's, that's, okay, that's just stupid. Yeah, don't do that. It's not only stupid, it's also a bit dangerous. Because if you punish your dog, if you don't allow your dog to growl, you're missing a very, very important um, uh, warning, warning signal. Because growling is a distance increasing signal saying, okay, I've had it now, it's enough. <laughs> yeah, if you don't stop, then I have to, you know, do more clear language. You know what the top of this ladder or the pyramid that many of you maybe have seen, it starts with the calming signals like lick, licking their nose and um, turning their heads and so on. The top of the pyramid is to bite. That's what, what they do when they feel threatened or scared. And I've just discussed this with Tudi today because I really wanted... Uh, to make sure that I told you the same thing she's telling you, the same way, so that we uh, hopefully uh, don't have misunderstandings like this. So she said, um, so what did she say? She, she said, uh, you know, the, the distance increasing signals like biting, growling, uh, trying to scare away is a part of their natural body language too. So that's what they do when they get really scared or protective, you know, uh, protective because they're scared that something will be taken away. For example, um, protective of their puppies or of food or whatever they have an issue with. Then you can work with that. OK, but I'm just giving you examples. Um, so don't punish. Don't ever stop your dogs from using their language. And that's also something Tudi said that I should say tonight, because actually I asked her if she could come live, but she didn't have time today. She's doing, she's doing, it's so wonderful. She's 85, but she's still out there training dogs. <laughs> so this evening she was going to do leash walking uh, with, with a client of hers. So she, she couldn't be here tonight, but uh, she said, it's very important to mention, so I will, that we should always let them use their calming signals. Yeah. Okay. It's a fundamental aspect of canine communication, the calming signals. And it means being polite and to prevent conflicts. They use it for both purposes. Uh, preventing conflicts for an animal because they are quite clever. They know that a conflict, a potential conflict could be dangerous for me. I could get hurt. I could die. Yeah. So they don't want to, they don't want to be in a conflict. So if you hear about a dog that wants to pick a fight all the time, then it's something wrong because it's not natural behavior it's normal behavior for that dog but we need to help that dog because can you imagine going around feeling that you have to pick a fight all the time it's something that's bothering this dog yeah that's not that's not uh, natural for a dog what's natural for dogs is to try and be polite and be calm and peaceful within their family, okay? So that's why they use a lot of calming signals, such as splitting, for example, going in between to prevent a conflict. So let's say you have two adolescent dogs, they're playing, you know, uh, and it, the play is getting a bit wild and out of hand. Then typically an adult dog would think, okay, this is, you know, 
let's just calm down here. We don't want to, you know, start a fight or with puppies, you know, when they're overtired and, you know, someone starts crying. <laughs> so they will go in and split. So they use it to prevent conflicts. And they use it to be polite to us and to you, your the closest person in your dog's life, your dog will show you calming signals because it's just a natural, polite behavior also around you. It does not always mean that the dog is afraid. It does not always mean that the dog is anxious or is feeling bad in a situation. Okay? So, like I said, this is the part of the language that Tudi Drugos was the first one to describe as the calming signals in dogs. The term calming signals is not something that Tudi made up. It has existed for many, many years. And we talk about calming signals for other species as well. But she was, like I said, the, the author of the first book about this. So... Do not stop your dogs from using their calming signals. It's a natural part of their communication and we should uh, allow it. Uh, also, she's very uh, eager to, to try and explain to us, and that's, that's a good point actually, that when your dog is showing you a calming signal like lip uh, lip lick, licking or uh, their head to the other you know to the side or yawning we should not reply with the same calming signal that is like you know uh that's just rude actually <laughs> that's just that's just if i say to you it's like hi how are you doing and then you know you go hi how are you doing and i said well you didn't hear what i said well, you didn't hear what I said. That's just echoing, you know, and it's not very polite. So when your dog is showing you a calming signal, you don't have to show the same calming signal um, back to your dog. But what you might have to do is to change whatever is happening. So uh, an example is if you are walking towards a dog, it could be your own dog, but... Uh, Let's say it's a dog you don't know that well, because that dog doesn't obviously doesn't know you that well and is more likely to show you more calming signals if you walk straight towards that dog. That dog might turn his head or yawn or do some uh, calming signals. Lifting a paw is a calming signal, you know, and this things takes a split second to do. So it's sometimes difficult to to see them that's why you have to practice um so what you do then when you when the dog is showing you these signals then you start curving because curving is a natural part of their language and that's polite behavior two dogs that don't know each other they do not walk straight on to each other they do curving some dogs do bigger curves some dogs do smaller curves but they curve. So that's how you react to that. But you don't have to overreact like, oh my God, this dog is really scared. You know, I have to show my back and you, you kind of reversing into the situation. Don't overdo it. You know, it's a small, polite signal to you that, you know, uh, it's a bit too much. So typical calming signals that we're talking about today in this lecture is Licking, yawning, sniffing the ground, turning head, play bow, standing still, blinking. So, um, when two dogs meet, they don't know each other. Typically, if it's puppies, they, you know, they're, they're just like children, a bit more young and naive, and they might run, you know, more straight towards each other but then they stop they stand still and they look to the side or they turn their head a little bit a bit away from each other that's a polite calming signal that's polite behavior 
it's not like oops sorry i'm scared or anything no 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 it's just like ah yeah i'm here i am i'm just polite uh, an adult dog would typically curve you know for for a puppy they could show these signals to tell the puppy that i am you know i'm okay you can come and you can come and greet me i'm a polite dog don't be you know worried about me yeah so it's a it's a natural way of being polite towards each other and that's why it's so important for us to let uh, let them use these signals uh, i also want to give you another example very uh, sad actually because when we do especially the old fashioned way of doing it i've attended many courses like that in the in the past so when we got the puppies we went typically to a puppy class you know and we had to 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 um, use a very short lead to control the big dominant puppy that will take over the household <laughs> i'm being very ironic now but anyhow so we were taught to use very very short lead and, you know, maybe even the first lesson was to walk closely to other dogs. Okay, now we're going to practice leash walking, typically walking, you know, uh, around other dogs or, or something on the course. So, first of all, we're starting with the exam. Second of all, what we do is that we take away the opportunities for the dogs to show each other this polite, calming language. So, no wonder dogs in these situations go a bit nuts no wonder you have dogs reacting on leash going rah, 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 when another dog is coming closer to them and this is what I, I talk about when I say they can learn you know to use them in in a not that good way yeah because of their experiences their past experiences so that is one really good reason for having a long leash and letting your dog curve when they meet someone else. You know, can you imagine you have a very str uh, narrow pavement or something? Or in Norway in the winter, there's a lot of snow, so they're even more narrow. And then we force a dog to go straight, um, straight up to another dog when we meet them on this pathway, this very narrow pathway, we have a very short lead and we expect them to behave nice because in our world, that's nice behave, behaving. That's not looking at the other dog, not, you know, not barking at the other dog, nothing. Just ignore the other dog. And then they have to pass really closely. That's no wonder no wonder dogs react. No wonder dogs learn to behave differently. No wonder dogs get bad experiences by that. So that's why it's so important to know these things. Because when I learned them, I was like, oh, yes, of course, it makes sense. I'm hoping that some of you listening to this also now thinks, oh, yes, it makes sense because it does. It's very logical, isn't it? Okay, so licking, turning head, uh, curving when meeting is polite language. And that's basically what I wanted to, to talk about in today's Facebook Live, is that the calming signals depends on the situation. It's the context. So if your dog is with other dogs, let's say you are somewhere with a lot of other dogs and it's a stressful situation and some dogs are not behaving politely or some humans are not behaving politely. If your dog is yawning or turning their head or showing calming signals in that situation, yes, maybe your puppy or your adult dog feels a little bit uncomfortable and tries to tell everyone, hey, I'm nice. Let's calm down, you know, everyone. We don't want this to escalate, yeah? If um, if your dog is showing you calming signals, when you bend over to put the harness on, 
that's because you are bending over to put the harness on. <laughs> when they show it to you, when you're petting them like this, or some stranger is doing that, you know, it's very natural that they would use a calming signal saying, okay, okay, I'm nice, I'm polite. I think you should be polite too. Hmm? So it's the context. So when you ask me or Tooted or anyone, what does my dog feel? You have to see the context. So the responsibility actually is on you. You need to learn the calming signals so that you can read your dog even better than you do today because you are still the expert on your dog. For this lesson, lesson, of course, it's one recommended book and that's on talking terms with dogs. Okay, that's it. I'm, I'm sure there is no such thing as favorite calming signal, but it could be calming signals that some dogs are using more than others. For example, you know, you have dogs, we breed dogs, you know, different looks. And some dogs have fur, like here. So do you think when you meet another dog, hey, hey, hey. So when I'm blinking, can you see me blinking? No, you can't. So maybe I have to do another calming signal so that people can actually see what I'm trying to communicate. That could be. What I think I want to most today is to tell you that and I totally I mean it you are the expert on your own dog and you need to trust yourself and your gut feeling more so you have to trust yourself um more um why do some dogs ignore coming signals to give space or not give space is it lack of knowledge or lack of control of their own emotions um could be could be a, could be either of these yeah um again there are different reasons this is the interesting thing that's why if you want to become a specialist you need to uh you need to um observe a lot of different dogs in different situations so um it could be they didn't learn it very well. They didn't develop maybe, you know, if you have an adolescent dog who has friends um, and they're kind of this bullying gang of dogs, then your dog will learn this bully language from the others, the bully uh, behavior more like, not language, but behavior. Um, so yes, but we can teach dogs we can teach our dogs to use the polite language we can help them find back to themselves and be more polite because remember dogs just always always remember this dogs don't want conflicts i mean that is not a natural thing for them to want to do so if they try to create a conflict or they don't know how to get out of one by using a polite language or their language, then we need to do something about it. We need to help them. It's like then, you know, we need to go and see a psychologist to help us with if we have issues, if I have issues. Yeah, I need some help to sort that out. And we can do it, which is absolutely great. Yeah. Um. It could be that some dogs are not as good as other dogs to use their polite language. So just like humans, some some of us are not uh, as polite. If you come to Norway, <laughs> you will meet a lot of not very polite people. Uh, but that's also because of our culture. So it's not normal to talk to, to people you don't know in Norway. So for other people, that seems like we're very rude. Yeah. Share this with your friends if uh, if you want to, if you have any any dog enthusiastic friends that should uh, learn or would like to learn more about uh, calming signals. Have a very nice evening and start observing your dogs. Yeah. And appreciate their calming signals and trust your gut feeling and yourself. Okay.
Bye, everyone.